Prince Handley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working, creative love. I want to talk to you today about something so important to reaching the whole world for Messiah Jesus and so important to you so that you can have multitudes of blessings here on earth and see multiplied millions of people in heaven when you go home. I want to talk to you about how to use the media to proclaim the good news. More specifically, creativity in advertising. I've placed several scriptures in the podcast show notes for you to look at, especially one, Isaiah 32:20. Blessed are you who sow beside all waters. The definition of the media is a channel of communications, sometimes advertising. Now, the definition of advertising is to warn, to call attention to, to tell people about or praise, and how wonderfully that fits proclaiming the good news of Mashiach Yeshua, Messiah Jesus. Some examples of media are social networking and media, newspaper and magazine ads, transit ads, radio and TV spots or ads, and internet advertising, street drama, posters, signs, and stickers, holography, billboards, robotry, DVDs, webcams, videocasts, podcasts, airplanes and blimps, PowerPoint or multi-screen projections, clothing, arts, crafts, and theater, internet and websites, CD-ROMs and DVDs, comic books, flash movies. Yes, blessed, happy are you that sow beside all waters. Sow the seed of God's word in every way that you can. Let God multiply his word and his work through you. This teaching will show you how to use the media to proclaim the good news to the whole world. Remember, the media is to be used to teach all nations. It should reflect and magnify the Messiah, not man. I'm going to give you specific examples in this teaching to help you get started, and then let them explode ideas for you to use. And then get ready to see multitudes in heaven when you get there. People that you have reached with God's word as you utilize the media and creative advertising. Yes, my friend, let God multiply his work through you through the use of literature, social media like YouTube, Wikipedia, Facebook, CDs, DVDs, webcams, videocasts, podcasts, websites, comics, games, drama, iPods, smartphones, MP3 devices and any other form of media that can be used by God's Spirit. Remember, the media is to be used to teach all nations, and it should reflect and magnify Christ, not man. Study the examples in this podcast. Now I'm going to describe to you several types of media and give you a quick idea of how to use them. I want to get you started and let God multiply you after that. Now first, we'll discuss social networking and media. Social networking and media. Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, YouTube, LinkedIn, and others are all excellent ways to spread the good news of Messiah Yeshua. There are basically six types of social media. Social networks like Facebook and LinkedIn. Social news like Dig and Reddit. Blogs, blog comments, and forums. There are many types. Microblogging like Twitter media sharing like YouTube and Flickr, bookmarking sites like Delicious and StumbleUpon. You can reach not only friends you know or have known years ago, but people you interact with from nations and cultures around the world today. You can even use language translators like IM Translator, SmartLink, and others to communicate with people of other languages. And by the way, I have links for these in the show notes. Twitter is especially efficient if you're limited to 140 characters, And you can pack a lot if you link to a website in your message. You can link to sites that you find helpful, like the University of Excellence, Prince Handley, the Healing Podcast, or to specific pages on the sites like Israel in the Middle East, or Healing, or Deliverance. I happen to use Twitter for 24-7 continuous release of selected teachings and podcasts. By God's grace, the Holy Spirit posts through me over 100 teachings per day to over 100,000 followers. Check out Twitter, Prince Handley, and the link for that is in the show notes. Newspaper and magazine ads, display ads, 
Larger ads in, say, newspapers, magazines, like store ads, may or may not use photos or illustrations. Get the attention of the reader. If you use artwork, like a photo or illustration, then make your picture fit your wording or your copy. If you need help, the newspaper or magazine advertising department has people who will help you at no cost. Or pray and ask God to lead you to a Christian who's good in graphics or advertising. Use lots of white space in your ad. Don't crowd the ad. Make it easy to read. You'll see an example of that in the show notes of this podcast. For example, your copy might say, Win a trip for the family. And then you have a photo of a family on the rail of a steamship or boarding an airplane. And then you have smaller text that says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved in your house. Note the scripture text would be placed somewhere in the ad with the copy and the photo or artwork, but don't crowd the ad. Now, classified ads, smaller, inexpensive ads, uh, usually no photos, used to advertise pets, employment, notices, houses for rent, and so forth. You can use the announcement section in your newspaper or magazines. Very good to use since it usually comes first. I'll give you an example of a classified ad. Here's the copy. Here's your chance for a new start. And then you say, the greatest Jew alive will be in your city, put your city name there, this week. You may call him ahead of time. He said to tell you, turn from your sins, ask me into your life. My name is Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. Note, use your imagination. If you've never been good in art, or if you've never been creative, don't let that stop you. Isaiah 42, 8 and 9 and Isaiah 43, 18, 19 tell us that God can do a new work. Ask God for an anointing of creativity. Then start. Ask God for wisdom. Radio and TV spots or ads and internet advertising are a tremendous way to proclaim the good news. Radio 60-second spots, one-minute spots, you can run those on non-Christian stations. Run them at different times in the day to reach different audiences. For example, early morning, people going to work, mid-morning, people at home, noontime, mixed audience, afternoon, school students, late afternoon, people going home from work in a car or bus, evening, a mixed audience. Let me give you some suggestions. Run a cluster of three spots in one five- or ten-minute period. I've done this in cities. Uh, I particularly picked noontime in the Los Angeles area at a top high-volume station. I usually like to pick devil stations, or what I should say, worldly stations, excuse me, and I'll run a cluster of two or three ads together. These are 60-second spots, three of them within a 10-minute time, or a cluster of three. And you might want to use background music or sounds. You can use a conversation between two people, but no more than two. Now, for television, you want to use shorter spots, 30-second spots. You don't need as much time because you have the advantage of being able to see with the sound. It's good to use people from different races and ethnic groups to show an example of Christ's love and power for all people. For example, a black person, a white person, a Jew, and an Arab. Note, you can always use the content of the Word of God in every ad you make. Isaiah 55:11 tells us that God's Word will never return void. It will prosper and accomplish the purpose for which God sends it. Now, Internet ads, a little different. You can run ads on Google, Yahoo, on email facilitators like Gmail, Yahoo Mail, and so forth. Email them for specific rates and instructions. There are lots of good how-to-do-it books on the market covering with practical information, such as the Idiot Guides and so forth, or the Idiot's Guide to Internet Advertising. I made that name up. Posters, signs, and stickers can be different sizes. You can have a small 10-centimeter mini poster to a 1-meter maxi poster. You can use peel-off self-advertising. It can be in different languages. I set up a silkscreen company just to do advertising in many languages, and we did little signs, medium size, large signs. I personally smuggled 4,000 signs into Israel one time. And those signs ended up in the, on the gun stocks of the Israeli army, the IDF. They liked them so well with the Star of David, Hebrew writing, Shema Israel, Messiah Jesus died for us, was buried, is alive. Little signs about three by four inches with permanent stick adhesive. And the Israeli soldiers put them on the gun stocks. They also ended up in the police station on walls. The policemen loved them. And you can also make large signs. I put signs actually in the Dead Sea caves where the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered. I also stopped in the Sinai Desert one time and put up signs 
in a government meter project that was there to uh, gather rain when it rained. And there's a lot of things you can do. Just have fun with God, my friend. There's no excuse to ever be bored with Jesus. You can make signs large enough to be seen as people drive by. By the way, read Habakkuk 2.2. Make the signs large that people can read it as they run by. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Read that in the Tanakh. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Make them large enough that people can read them as they run by. We used to supply information and free blueprints for people that wanted to build billboards. One uh, retired United States Air Force colonel put up five in one city on the East Coast. We put up a sign in the uh, metropolitan area of Los Angeles one time that reached multiplied millions of people. And some of the wealthiest Jews of the world drove by there every day and had to slow down as they went by as they transitioned from the Harbor Freeway onto the Santa Monica Freeway. With a big star of David, Messiah Jesus, died for us, was buried, is alive. If you use outdoor big signs, make the name Jesus or Yeshua large enough to be seen 150 meters away. Then the rest of the message can be smaller so it can be read when people are close. The same sign can be used for all sizes, just enlarge or reduce the original. Now, talking about billboards again, in some places you can build your own billboards and put them up beside the road, highway, or freeway. In large cities, you may find large advertising companies who will give you free space for a period of time. The large size billboards, which are rented, usually are owned by advertising companies. And I'll give you a tip. If you have money, they love to rent your signs. Suggestion. Pray and ask God to leave you to someone who owns land by a roadside and who will let you put up a large sign free. You can reach thousands every day. And it doesn't have to be in a big city. You might do it in a small city. Now, let's talk about DVDs, webcams, and video casts. It's easy and powerful, if done correctly, to use social media like YouTube, like a PDF, and Facebook for video casts that you produce. Go to these three media sources and view examples of what type of casts are being shown. Then get your own ideas from the Holy Spirit. And don't forget to let people know about your webcast. Advertise, promote, market, get the word out. There are several inexpensive paperback books on the market to help you with this. Also search online. You can make your own video presentations. Webcams are very inexpensive. Also, many of the newer laptop computers have built-in webcams. For creative content, you will not probably want to purchase a better unit. Go to different computer stores. Ask them about the kind of equipment you will need. Many places will rent equipment. You might consider and pray about going to school or taking an online computer course in web production, cinematography, or other areas of video or webcam production. Count the cost, my friend. Believe God's promises. Work for the Messiah, Yeshua, the Anointed One. Remember, God wants to reach people with this message more than you do. DVD and webcam recorders provide an excellent means of video presentation, and most people have their own DVD players or smartphones. However, at the present, in some areas of third world countries, films are still the most easily seen by large crowds in the outdoors and least expensive. For work in larger third world cities where the people have their own TV, DVD players, satellite receivers and computers, or can rent them, you may want to use DVDs, webcams, or vodcasts, videocasts to evangelize or to teach. I had one video that we did called Fire in Israel, or actually it was filmed in Israel, less than 20 minutes long, showed to over 18,000 people at one showing in the open air in Kenya, East Africa. Now let's talk about podcasts. Podcasting is one of the most popular forms of media presentation with amazing growth and acceptance in countries all over the world. All you need is a computer and the know-how. The know-how can be learned from any of several books on the market. Do a search on the internet or at a library for podcasting. You can have a voice to the whole world for Christ. And if you're creative in the spirit, you will find an audience and friends in every corner of the globe. You need, number one, content that's interesting. Number two, consistency in broadcasting. Regular podcasts that you produce. And number three, uniqueness in presentation. And then let's talk about PowerPoint or multi-screen projections. You need the following equipment, webcam, video camera, computer with software for presentations, any of these, one DVD player or computer or high-definition screen. 
Note, if the viewing's to be outdoors or for large audiences, you'll need advice on what type of screen to use. In some third world areas, films or DVDs are still used more practically with electric generators. And by using three projectors, you can show different pictures side by side, more action, faster action, you can show someone finding Messiah as their Savior with the scripture showing at the same time on the next screen while a lot of color is exploding on the third screen. All of this while music is mixed with the recorded gospel message. Transit ads used on buses and taxis and at airline terminals and subways. They may be used inside or outside on buses. If used outside on buses, the ad is eye level with the reader at the, as the bus drives by them. The ad can be on the back or the side or on the front of the bus. If used inside the bus, you can use what's called car cards. You can have tear-off mail cards attached so the reader can mail you for literature. Suggestion. Transit ads can be directed to specific ethnic groups by using proper pictures, artwork, photos, illustrations, and the right messages, not only at airports, but on buses which travel to certain ethnic areas and cities. And let's discuss drama, outdoors or indoors. No expense involved. You don't even need good clothing. Get a few people to paint their face. Go to a busy place where there are lots of people. Put on your act. Preach the gospel with drama, outdoors or indoors, with voices, talking voices, or pantomime, silently but with gestures. Great for marketplaces, malls, and wherever people gather. And holography. Oh, my wonderful way. A new way to project a three-dimensional 3D image into a space without a screen. You may want to research this online or at a university library. Suggestion. It would be powerful to see an image of Elijah or an angel preaching to the people. And then robotry. Similar to holography, only robots are used instead of projected images. In the last days, the Holy Bible tells us that the Antichrist, the false Mashiach, and his false prophet will use an image, probably a robot or holography. Why shouldn't God's people with the Spirit of God use robots or holography to preach the good news? Airplanes and blimps. Airplanes can pull a short gospel message behind them. They can be rented. There are also planes which can cut out letters in smoke to make messages. Airplanes may be used to drop gospel literature in certain areas. If you're using smoke messages, you want to make sure that the day that the plane goes by, there's not strong winds. Airplanes may also be used to draw some gospel literature in certain areas. Blimps, airships, dirigibles also pull gospel messages. And lighted messages can be seen from computerized message centers placed underneath the blimps or the airships. In this way, long messages may be shown at night to millions in large cities as the flow of the word goes by. I had one student, a tremendous man of God, fantastic church, a church that fasted a lot. He heard my message years ago on the media and rented an airplane and in sunny Southern California flew down that coast while everybody was laying on the beach preaching the gospel back and forth. Sunny day, preaching Christ to the crowds. He called it bikini broadcasting. And now internet websites. You may think you know everything about it, but by using the Internet, by computer, you can reach people all over the world. Many of you listening to me are already doing this, but let me give you an amp. In other words, I want you to amplify what you're doing. I want to give you some new ideas. You can reach kings, queens, national leaders, politicians, wealthy people, religious leaders, criminal and gang leaders, people from every religious, political, and social strata in their own home. Ask God to lead you to someone who knows computers and can help you set up the site the way you want it, not the way they want it. There are also several good text editing programs on the market now, which make it much easier to develop websites without a thorough knowledge of HTML or markup language. Inquire at a computer software store or search online. People can email you instantly from all over the world asking for prayer, information, or counsel, or contacts. You can establish links on your site in cooperation with other godly ministries so the person viewing your site can interact and contact other ministries directly from your site. But warning, if you're going to have links on your site, make sure they are not to a person or ministry who would destroy the faith of the people to whom you're ministering. For example, if you're teaching someone about the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the Ruh, the Ruh HaKodesh, or about the healing power of Messiah, you wouldn't want them to link to someone who has a lack of knowledge in the Word of God 
and would tell them a lie that God doesn't heal or that miracles don't happen today. I received emails every day, people wanting healing or deliverance or needing miracles. I had a lady that emailed me who had endometriosis, the, where the uterine wall, uh, the wall of the uterus disintegrates. She was so sad. She was in her early 30s, and she couldn't have any children, plus a lot of problems associated with that condition. I prayed for her, and I believe I sent her a prayer cloth. And she wrote back, and in one month, the Lord had healed her, and she had conceived a child. And my friend, she was so happy, happy that she didn't have that stigma anymore, happy that she could give birth to a child of her own. There's so many ways that you can be used of God to help people, my friend. Give them contact to you. I want to give you another suggestion. Take advantage of email if you are using the internet, not only for instant communication, but also to evangelize and teach. You can get email lists just like phone lists and broadcast the gospel to people right inside their houses and businesses. You can pay for ads directed to people on Yahoo, Gmail, Ymail. If you don't have a computer, if you're in a country where they're not plentiful, pray. Believe God to give you a computer. God wants to reach people more than you do. Study and do diligent research so you may be a good steward of what God's given you, your brain and your time. Then let the Holy Spirit anoint you. And I realize that in my podcast, I'm reaching many people that are in third world countries, that some of you are in a coffee house or in a cyber cafe. You don't have your own computer. You're paying for time at that cyber cafe to listen to these podcasts. On the other hand, I'm reaching people that are real geeks. They're professional IT people. So I have to kind of direct my messages to both polar ranges and those in between. But take what God is sharing with you today through me and use it to multiply what you're already doing or to release those ideas that God has already given you or to stir up your spirit for an explosion of new ideas to reach the world for Christ. We may not always have the liberty that we have right now. Now let's talk about CD-ROMs and DVDs. CD-ROMs and DVDs are an excellent medium to teach and preach Messiah through music, sound, and video. Be as creative as you want. Produce actual testimonies or reenactments of true life situations where God has done miracles in people's lives. Produce Bible stories. Let people see Jesus as a real man, God in human flesh, in real life situations. DVDs can be used on computers, players, the internet, Ask God to lead you, then study, read, and learn all you can. Do your part, and the Holy Spirit will do His. Comic books. This is perhaps the most unused and at the same time the most powerful medium available. Young people and old people alike like comic books in every country of the world. If you live in a big city, go to the annual comic book convention. You'll see what a big market it is. Go to something like Comic Con. Also, you see how many cultists and demonized people are using this medium. Christians have missed the boat. You can even do comic books in wordless form, where people can see the message through the art with no words. We started publishing wordless books years ago for children and adults with no art at all, just using colors to explain sin, the blood of Christ, heaven, hell, God, and the Holy Spirit. How much more effective can you be with art? Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to someone who's gifted in art. Go to a printer and find out how to prepare the manuscripts for printing and binding. Suggestion. Make a comic book with each of the following. How to be whole. How to be healed. How to receive God's power. How to prosper. I have links for these in the show notes that will show you specifically what you can start with. The content, in other words. And then use your ideas. You could have one 28 or 32 page comic with seven or eight pages covering each of the four booklets that I just mentioned. In other words, each of the four booklets would be one section in the comic. There would be four sections inside the comic. Do them in English or whatever language you want at first with the artwork describing each of the phrases. You'll have two main printed areas on each artwork or caption as follows. Section one, how to be whole. By the way, that'll be eight pages with four pictures on each page. Example, title for the first picture, God created the universe because he had a plan. And then dialogue for that first picture. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1.1. Suggestion, decide what characters will be in the comic sections. 
like God, man, Jesus, devil, and so forth. Then write out the dialogue and title for each picture or artwork section. Finally, have someone draw the art to depict the title and the dialogue or the action. Note, you can show Jesus casting out demons, healing the sick in the section How to Be Healed. You can show people being baptized in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues in the section How to Receive God's Power. I want to give you a testimony. Twenty-two people were baptized in the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues just from reading one of my printed copies of the tract How to Receive God's Power. In other words, they read the same piece of paper, and 22 people were baptized in the Spirit. Suggestion. You might even be blessed to produce a word comic book that could be understood by people anywhere in the world. This will take some creativity, but God's Holy Spirit is the Creator. People could be saved, healed, filled with the Spirit, learn how to prosper. Think what effect that would have on world missions, raising up churches and messianic synagogues, and helping to usher in the return of Jesus, the Messiah, to the earth to set up his kingdom. You will have many rewards. God will bless you abundantly. In the Brit Hadashah, the Hebrew New Testament, in the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 10, Yeshua taught us, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. That's before he returns. And he also taught us in Mark, chapter 16, verse 15, You go into all the world, and you preach the gospel to every creature. This has been your friend, Prince Handley, coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working, creative love. Baruch Abba, Adonai.